Cultural. Welcome to episode 8 of the Bite Size Irish Gaelic Podcast. My name is Mary Murphy, or if you'd prefer, Moira Ni Merkel. Even if you're alone learning to speak Irish outside of Ireland, don't despair. Rest assured that there are thousands like you across the globe, all interested in tapping into Ireland's native culture. For more information about this podcast, go to www.bitesizeirishgaelic.com forward slash podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Owen of Bite Size Irish Gaelic. <laughs> now, Owen is normally sitting in this chair, but I thought, wouldn't it be great to turn the tables and put him in the interviewee chair? So, the Rit Owen, come as a thought to Oh, do you go to Vaira? Tommy Anwa, Gur Mahagut. And uh, it was, that was a really an interesting idea you had. And uh, I didn't expect for the tables to sur- turn so quickly when you suggested it. I was really happy to jump at the idea of uh, yeah, doing an interview the other way around because for people who may not have heard it, episode seven of the Bite Size Irish Gaelic podcast, I interviewed you. Yeah. So, <laughs> This would be fun. It's certainly a different chair for me to be in. I'm always the one who's being interviewed. And I just thought, what a gas this would be. And I tell you, coming up with questions was loads of fun. But, you know, you want to come up with interesting questions. So it's an art form that you have there. (laughs) It's really led by curiosity, isn't it? I'm happy to hear that, like, other people are... You know, we've got maybe two listeners out there (laughs) and they're really enjoying the show. So we had a couple of iTunes reviews, like two iTunes reviews. Wow. Since the last time. So an anonymous reviewer, a grateful listener they go by. So only they know who that is. But they said, fantastic and informative. I've always been interested in Irish culture and I've never found many books that delve into the culture in depth. This podcast is wonderfully done, and the host is a native Irish speaker. Many great interviews, including Mary Murphy, and insight into this fascinating language and culture. Thank you, Bite Size Irish Gaelic. Thank you. And I should continue into Robert1066, who gave us a five-star thumbs up. I'm learning Irish through Bite Size online course. So that's excellent. It's really nice to have Robert as a member of our online Bite Size lessons where you can learn Irish. And these podcasts are chock full of good information, but also inspiration for us newbies. So Robert Grimil Mahagat. And thanks to Anne Cartmel and Sean O'Carwell and Brenda Sutton, who all emailed in some suggestions of interviewees that they thought we should interview. I just wanted to thank them for their kind words. So with that over and done with Mary, I'll hand the the microphone back over to you. Oh, lovely. Well, you know, when I was sitting down to think of questions, the first thing that I thought of, because it's something I've been curious about since I first found you, I happened to find you, by the way, by searching the web because I wanted to work on Irish. And there you were. And the reason I actually clicked on your URL is because I loved the name. I thought Bite Size Irish Gaelic was a very catchy turn of phrase. I thought, how did you come up with that name? Did you have other names in the running? Why would you have chosen that? And that's a curiosity. <laughs> Interesting. Well, Bite Size Irish Gaelic, I will be the first to admit, and it's been uh, said <laughs> to my face uh, as well that <laughs> it's a long name and actually a piece of trivia we started as Bite Size Irish all alone so the first idea it wasn't even online lessons but I knew I wanted to help people learn our beautiful native language of Ireland so I was kind of thinking of how to do this because at the time so if you allow me to go back a bit I was running a site called irishgaelictranslator.com and to say that I was running it is a bit much. I started it and I ran the server but it was really a community effort and at the time that was my role at the site. So I wanted to maybe expand and see what else we could do. People were like asking for translations you know for a lot of lot of tattoo requests (laughs) for uh, Irish phrases 
stuff like that. So I thought, right, it's really hard to learn a language. And I know that I've learned French, or I learned a bit of French, having lived there a bit. I've also, in later years, been learning Slovenian, which is Sasha's language, that's my wife. And just realized, or it was always obvious as it is to everybody, that learning language is really hard. But at the same time, like over those years at Irish Gaelic Translator, you know, I was getting all these emails from people, especially in the States, but also Australia, the UK and outside of Anglo-Saxon countries. It was so obvious that people were pouring out their feelings for their Irish heritage, whether it was their mother or their grandmother or even further back or they didn't even know that they had Irish heritage but were interested in Ireland, right? Yeah, we wanted to somehow make a connection for them between Ireland and where they were living outside of Ireland. And like, Mary, what do you think, like, maybe before internet times, unless you knew an Irish speaker, it must have been very hard to connect with anything Irish. What do you think? Well, I mean, I suppose it depends on where you're living as well and, you know, how big your family might be. You know, if you're an Irish person leaving Ireland and there's Irish in your household, it's a little different than if it's your grandparents or something who came long ago, right? Um, I feel like I'm being interviewed. (laughs) 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 Turn about was fair play. I actually would want to ponder that question a bit. So let's go on to another question. (laughs) So where did the word bite-size Irish from? Are you thinking about eating in an apple or what? Well, I guess what I wanted to do was try to break down learning a bit of the Irish language into such small pieces that you could treat one piece on its own. Yeah. And if you took that bite, it was, you know, it was enough for one day. I think the worst thing that somebody could do, because not that it's inherently bad, but what's bad about it is you jump into something you're so excited about, whether it be learning a language, I don't know, learning about another topic, and it can very quickly become overwhelming. And unfortunately, most people just kind of let it drop. And like, you've been good enough to keep at it. You can leave it for a couple of months. You come back to it with your friend Bernadette. Yeah. I think without breaking it down into those small steps for our members it was a way to bring them into the language and give them something small enough that they could do you know in a few minutes that's a great point because for bernadette and i who will be here in about 45 minutes to do our lesson oh cool (laughs) it's been very wonderful having another person to sit with and laugh with and learn the language with again right But little bite size, it's a great way to put it, because even if you just take one small step, that's another step forward, right? And having a person to do that with makes all the difference in the world. Because when you are alone, there's no way to really know if you're doing it right, saying it right, which is why your site is so fabulous, because you can join, you know, different levels of your site, and then you can hear you saying the words that are written so you can find out if you're correct. So I think that's a, a really important aspect. And you just explained it so well about the bite size. And uh, not to make a sales thing of this, I don't want to do that. But if anybody is out there and they have been trying to learn a little bit of Irish and they have been on their own, come to our site at bitesizeirishgaelic.com forward slash live. And you'll be able to just sign up for our email notification for when our one-to-one tutoring service will be up. That's all I'll say about that. Oh, that's a great thing to say. It's very important. I don't think it's, you know, self-promotion. You're trying to help people here. I'm sure you're not retiring on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) I also was looking at your Why Learn Irish page. And it was so fabulous. There's such a lovely, vast array of reviews from all over the world. I mean, Russia to Florida to Canada, Australia, England. I don't know how you manage to reach and contact so many people from around the world. I mean, is it a lot of this word of mouth, the domino effect of the Internet? What? 
Yeah, um, well, what is nice about it is we can be in Limerick, where I am now, and, you know, we don't have to be limited by that to who we can connect with and who can ask us questions. So the credit all comes down to those people who sent in lovely messages to us, but they were obviously, for whatever reason, they were wanting to learn a little bit of Irish. They searched out a bit of Irish. I started saying it that we started with the name of Bite Size Irish and we moved to Irish Gaelic. And the reason was that even though it's longer and it's a term that's disliked in Ireland, generally what I've found, but it was really a way to connect with people outside of Ireland who may not be calling it Irish, right? You call it Irish, Mary. I do. People will say, what do you mean in Irish? Isn't it called Gaelic? <laughs> well, well, if you're in Ireland, you'd call it Irish. I don't think it's too long of a name. It's like saying Mary Murphy is too long of a name. I should be called Mo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good point, yeah. This society is so intent on making things quick and fast and easy. It's like, really? It's three words, people. <laughs> hmm. Oh, good point. And I would like to point out that you have said to me several times in the past, Owen, that you don't see yourself as a particularly creative person. But I'd like to argue that point because just beginning the site, having the forethought to create this site and to lure people in a good way to the site, to help people move past their fears of reconnecting with their native tongue or learning a new language for non-Irish people, I personally would say that's an extremely creative process. And so in my mind, I say you're quite talented and creative. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I guess it comes out of different motivations, I guess, doesn't it? I guess you as a musician, you get your songs from certain inspirations or musical tunes you like. And I guess I came at it a lot from the technology side. So I am a nerd. <laughs> That's for sure. That's also a creative process, though. Coming up with the concept to lay it all out. I mean, it's laid out so well, and it's so easy to navigate. So many, well, not so many, a lot of sites are very difficult to navigate. And you're thinking, well, where am I going to go to learn this or to find that out? And it's very manageable. So hats off to you. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Like I do want to keep working on how we've laid out the lessons. So. It's been like in this kind of view we have for about a year, year and a half. And I do want to work on it, but in working on it, I'll definitely need the feedback of our members uh, to keep us in check and to keep it simple, really. There's nothing wrong with a bit of simplicity, is there? No, it's absolutely imperative, if you're, especially if you're learning it from never having really heard it. And for someone who's coming back to it, it's all oh, right, of course, though. Why didn't I not remember that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and now you yourself, Owen, were you brought up in an Irish English speaking household? Yes. Yeah, so uh, going back a bit, like uh, I remember from the last episode that um, we were both born in Waterford, right? Right. And we quickly moved over west to the west of Ireland. So I pretty much grew up in Ennis in County Clare, Ballyan Hincha. My parents brought us up with Irish. It was definitely my first language. And they themselves, they weren't necessarily brought up with Irish, but for whatever different reasons from either side, they were interested in the Irish language itself. So I think they made a, a real point of bringing us up with Irish. So it's hard to kind of put yourself back in someone's shoes like 30 years ago, but... Ireland is definitely on the cooler side of cool now compared to how it was 30 years ago. There's good things and bad things happened since, I guess, with the language, but it's kind of perception in public. It feels a lot warmer now in Ireland. I would say that's true. People get a sense of pride. Yeah, like I've spoken to many a person who, you know, they've been brought up in Ireland in an English-speaking family, English-speaking school, and they kind of regret that they didn't show more interest when they were younger. No, that's not their fault. Those people now are also open to learning a bit of Irish, using Coupla Fuckle, and even watching a bit of TG Cahar television, for example, and stuff like that. But I still wouldn't 
want to overestimate how it is. A lot of my friends, if they were forced into speaking a word of Irish, it's something alien to them now. And then there's an, another group of friends who we meet in the pub every month and just speak Irish. So there is definitely a separation there. Oh, I'll have to come join you one of these days. Ah, oh, definitely. <laughs> Good <kinta. laughs> Well, should I embarrass myself now? Oh, sure, go on. I like that. Is through a shin, Nilach Pilam Gwelgelgum, Afak Shaida Tri Kishtana, Tom Ovrani Ogish Scrive Noor, Ach Nachawiltu Muntor August Lake Tour, August Amachlat the Fost, and Anwiltu Higame. I'll take him who? So, Vuin me on Rivracht Erfa Tamil Mar Lake Tour, Ach. Near every of a post lawn, I'm sure a lake door to a gum. So in our era, it's then a river to me as Tahnian shall lum a vague river claru. So this a gen of tide research of a cupola blean in old school limni, University of Limerick. Ach, um, so Jera, we found our Rodegan Ali Yenov, we found our Rodegan Nis Technula Yenov. I guess uh, Rinna may kinna Dunneray, I guess, and it's a genum Reeve Chloru, it's a web developer, me. Big him lap, you're going to shin, Toshe Shayinta. Oh, Gahunta, yeah. Well, it wasn't as great as I was hoping. <laughs> it is very nerve wracking when you're working on something and then you actually have to use it. <laughs> See, I need Bernadette here so she can, you know, flip me in the air and laugh at me. Uh, so, your wife, Sasha. Now, she is an immigrant, right? Mm-hmm. Slovakia? Slovenian. Slovenia, excuse me. Oh, we will just cut that part out. <laughs> oh, no, 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 we'll keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to dislike me. So is she a big part of working on the site? And is she herself learning Irish? These days, Sasha definitely uses Irish every day. And it's little phrases and words. Because we kind of mix languages with Liam, our little son. He's a year old. So he definitely started bilingual. You'd say like, Kje Luchka, where's the little light? And he'd look up in Slovenian and you'd go, Kaolin Solislim, and he'd look up to the light. So he's, he's very clever. <laughs> so Sasha, um, she helped me set up Bite Size in the first place. Well, first of all, we were in Slovenia and when we're in Slovenia during summer, there's not much to do when we're out in the countryside and that's a good thing. It, you know, it's 10 a.m. so it's time for a beer. So you open up a beer, <laughs> take it easy. And uh, that's when the kind of brain cells get going as well. So I think back in 2009 and that summer, it was when we were first thinking about Bite Size. So actually to get back to the name, Sasha will claim that she came up with. Uh, my memory, I, I don't know. don't really remember that. But <laughs> That's what she claims. <laughs> like before we got married, we were flying over and back between Ireland and Slovenia, which is just to put it on the map. It's in old Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. So it has borders with Italy and Austria and Hungary and Croatia. And I hope I'm not losing out any other country. She came over and she went to Konrad Nagoyalega. It's a nationwide organization and further afield, and they have lessons. So she showed up every week in Limerick. So she is a brain box. She is very smart and uh, picked up Irish, the bits of Irish, very well. So she has a good habit of breaking down things into pieces of information you can pick up. It wasn't just the bite sized lessons she wrote, she wrote about the first 30. And I'd help her and really she came up with how to teach a beginner. And really, if you're coming at it from the perspective of a beginner, you're much more likely to teach what's of interest to beginners, right? And keep the things simple rather than being a teacher who's been teaching for 30 years and suddenly is in front of a new class and throwing terminology around, you know? Yeah, exactly. And as a beginner, she would say, oh, I know that I never could figure this out. And then, yeah, a great way to steer a lesson is through experience, right? Exactly, yes. She came at it from a great perspective and it really helped start off 
the bite-sized lessons as basic as we could. But Mary, like, I have a question for you because it's always hard when you're teaching a language. Sometimes it comes down to grammar. You kind of come down to, like, vocabulary, like, consonants and vowels. They're simple ones, but if you haven't been in school for a long time and you haven't been learning a language, you don't even necessarily know what those terms mean. So what's your opinion? Do you think you can learn a language without diving into the grammar much or what do you feel the balance is? It's easier to learn the vocabulary, for sure. There's so many fabulous words, but the grammar can get confusing, but it is absolutely imperative. It's great to have loads of vocabulary under your belt, but if you can't create a sentence, it's not going to help you much. That's one of the things I also love about your site is it really takes you through, you know, you can say, all right, I want to say hello to Owen. You can go to, how do you say hello, right? And you can actually learn instruction of that sentence and what order you put words in, right? So you wouldn't say, I am sick today. You say, there is illness upon me, right? So you have to learn the structure, which I think is a lovely way to say it. It's not your fault. It's the sickness's fault. <laughs> there is illness upon me. I'm not sick. <laughs> Would you like to me to ask you something totally frivolous? Oh, go for it. Tell us all one thing that you absolutely love to do and one thing that you absolutely loathe doing. Oh, these questions are very difficult. <laughs> are they? Okay, well, there we, that's what you loathe doing. <laughs> I, I loathe uh, coming up with answers. Let's see, what do I love doing? I like to keep it simple. So what I love doing on a weekend, maybe a bit of sunshine is out and Sasha and Liam and I will maybe just go down to the River Shannon and we'll have a little walk along the Shannon and let Ishka the dog run away, run around. We're in the city boundaries, but in about five, ten minutes, we're down by the river. So I love those kind of simple times and taking it easy on a Saturday and uh, getting enough time together because it's not always that easy with so much work and everything, you know, life throws at you that you have to do. That was a fabulous answer. Hmm, what do I loads do? When I thought of this, the first thing that when I wrote that, that idea down, I thought, well, I know what I'd say I love doing, and that's cleaning the fridge. <laughs> so what do I love doing? Oh, that, that's a hard one to say. Um, I'm really trying to pick out something that I really don't like doing, and oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's funny. All right, well then, how about you describe yourself in a couple of words? To the listeners? Oh, let's see. Well, I would say I'm shy. I'm friendly if you get to know me. <laughs> and I like my cup of tea. Ah, well, I hope that you don't put milk in first. <laughs> uh, oh, before taking out the tea bag? <laughs> my husband, when he has a cup of tea, normally he drinks coffee, but when he has tea, mm. he puts in the tea, no, he puts in the milk then he puts in the tea bag and then he puts water and oh. it just it, it drives me mad and he, of course now he does it because he knows it drives me mad yeah it comes down to the chemistry of the heat like you need it as hot as possible so i take a cup and i scald it so i, I put in a little bit of boiling water right and I throw that out put the tea bag in and straight in with the boiling water and it has to be as hot as possible and let that brew so you need a good brown substance and then after a couple of minutes then the tea bag can come out and the milk can go in. Oh no, I want to go have a cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say you're shy because you certainly don't come across as a shy person on your podcasts. But I have to say your vocal timbre, as you know, I've said this to you before, it is so beautiful. It is so pleasant. It just rolls. I don't know, your enunciation is really great. Have you ever done any other work besides the podcast, like in radio or? No, I haven't. But um, I remember, I'm just thinking back to when I first started doing these voice recordings. So the whole basis of Bite Size Irish Gaelic really is you can click around and you can hear words pronounced as many times as you like and in whatever order you want. So back in, it was the late 90s, right? And I was in school, in secondary school or high school. And uh, I had this little web page, homepage, 
it was called the Owens Fab homepage. And I put up little recordings of how to say a couple of Irish sentences. The guys at school, I remember about six months later, they found that out. They found the recordings online and they were making fun a bit. Aww. But really, when it comes... Well, you've shown them now. Yeah. But really, when, when it comes down to it, and that's like probably 16 years ago, when it comes down to it, that was like the beginnings of what Bite Size Irish Gaelic is now, where we have like several thousand recordings and several million plays of those recordings. That's really a very fascinating thing, you know, and if we all look back on our lives and you look at maybe things you did when you were younger and then you say, oh, I'm still doing that. You know, I used to sing into my skipping rope and pretend it was a microphone. And then I'd take my turtlenecks and put them over my head in a way that they were sort of falling down around my shoulders. And I had a yellow one and a brown one and a red one so I could change my hair color. <laughs> so my turtleneck became my hair. And my jump with skipping rope was my microphone. And then I would write absolutely ridiculous poetry. And I'm still doing it many years later. So... <laughs> That's cool, yeah, it keeps going. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have you in the future as one of my characters as a recording for one of my characters. I think you might be up for that. Oh, yeah, cool. Probably, a, you know, one of my children's books, one of my children's characters. You just have to tell me if there's a certain animal or you'd like to be. Or a, would would you I prefer, prefer to, to be a person? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Or a dog. Dogs are cute. <laughs> it's actually fun creating animal voices. But that's me. Actually, our dog Ishka, <laughs> she has kind of like a Spanish or, well, it depends on the day, but a Spanish accent or like a German accent. Oh, does she? Yeah. Do you uh, actually, do you teach her commands in all three languages? Ishka, the dog, and just uh, if somebody's listening, they don't know what that word is. It means water in Irish. So she can hear Cisius, which means sit down. Cisius Ishka. And a machlet, out you go. And she hears some commands in Slovene as well. But I think Sasha kind of picked up the commands in Irish a lot. So it kind of depends on the command. Actually, it was uh, Cetius means sit down and Lecius means lie down. And they seemed to be too close to each other. So she has Cetius for sit down, but lie down in English to lie down just to distinguish the words enough, yeah. Oh, Liam's going to have a great upbringing with three languages. Yeah, it's interesting, like, I wonder how it will turn out. I don't know which language or languages will turn out well or badly, or I hope he has all three of his daily languages. So we'll we'll see how it goes, yeah. Yeah, ah, I am doing what you did, which was to tell me to look at the time. Want to wrap it up? It's sort of your... It's your, pro- it's your podcast. I'm just sitting in the chair. <laughs> I'd say we should wrap it up. All righty. Well, Gormilia Mahogathon for being my guest on your program. <laughs> <laughs> I highly encourage people to join your site and to join all of the different levels that one might want to encourage the language that is Irish. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. This is really good fun. Great. Mary, and uh, to throw it back out, all things Mary is at marymurphy.ca, CA for Canada. And Mary's got albums and at least a couple of books. And I encourage you to check her out. So check that out. And yeah, of course, sure to wrap up, Mary, people can come to bitesizeirishgaelic.com forward slash podcast and find episode eight. If they want to leave a public comment on this episode, I'd love if they chimed in because it's nice to have them as part of this conversation. And if they want to send interview ideas over to me directly, you can email me at podcast at bitesizeirishgaelic.com. That's the email address. So Mary, will we wrap it up there? I have one more credit to give, but thank you for your time. Absolutely brilliant. It was so much fun and I like interviewing. I like being on the side of the desk, shall we say. Cool, we should do more of this, yeah. So thanks to Tukumo for their music, uh, which you hear on this episode under a Creative Commons license. And until next episode, Slán Gafol. Bye for now.